perform maintenance and servicing. The operators must have read and understood the manual, paying special attention to the chapter Safety Precautions. None observance of the above means a threat to life and limb. The separator works reliably, provided that it's operated and maintained in accordance with the operating instructions. Attention! Do not loosen any part of the separator before the bowl has come to a standstill. Use only genuine spare parts from Westphalia separator. Remove the spindle cap. Take out the gasket. Remove the discharge channel. Remove the gasket from the bore. Undo the sight glasses and drain the oil into the oil pan. Unscrew the three hex head screws and remove the cover plate. Unscrew the four hex head screws. Raise the motor slightly with flat belt pulley out of the lower section of the frame. Pull the drive belt off the flat belt pulley downwards. Take the drive belt out of the lower section of the frame. Lift the motor together with the flat belt pulley out of the lower section of the frame. Unscrew the three hex head screws. Place the bottom on the spindle. Pay attention to correct positioning. Fit the bowl shell. Screw in the threaded ring. Force off the spindle assembly with two hook wrenches. Remove the threaded ring, the bowl shell and the bottom from the spindle assembly. Remove the spindle assembly from the lower section of the frame. Pull the grooved ball bearing and the ball bearing protection ring off the spindle with the aid of a commercially available pulling device. Drive the dowel pin out of the spindle by means of light hammer blows. Be careful not to damage the spindle. Use snap ring pliers to remove the retaining ring. Pull the bearing cover with fitted radial packing ring and groove ball bearing off the spindle using a commercially available pulling device. Turn the lower section of the frame through 90 degrees. Unscrew the four hexagon nuts. Remove the lower section of the frame and the guard. Unscrew the three hex head screws with lock washers.
take the bearing cover out of the lower section of the frame. Take out the gasket. Dismantle the bottom bearing pressure piece with fitted gasket. Remove the retaining ring from the pivoting bearing groove. Drive the pivoting bearing out of its seat through the opening in the lower section of the frame. Drive the rubber metal cushion with fitted gasket out of the lower section of the frame with the aid of a plastic hammer and plastic mandrel. Take out the gasket. Clean and wipe dry the bearing seat. Fit the pivoting bearing and the retaining ring. Place the gasket on the shoulder of the bottom bearing pressure piece. Insert the gasket in the groove. Fit the bottom bearing pressure piece with fitted gasket in the pivoting bearing. The recess in the bottom bearing pressure piece must point to the bore. Grease the gasket as specified in the lubrication schedule. Mount the bearing cover. Pay attention to correct positioning. The hex head screw is glued in with Loctite 275. Screw the three M10 20mm hex head screws with lock washers into the bearing cover. Turn the lower section of the frame through 90 degrees. To avoid accidents, fit the guard, protection against contacting rotating drive parts, beneath the separator. Place the lower section of the frame on the plate and bolt tight with four hexagon nuts. Carefully fit the rubber metal cushion. The inner protruding pipe collar must point downwards. Lightly hammer the rubber metal cushion evenly into its seat with a mallet. Insert the gasket in the groove. Grease the gasket and guide surfaces of the rubber metal cushion as specified in the lubrication schedule. Check the hood limit switch for damage and functionality. Check the float switch for damage and functionality. The thread of the float switch is glued in with Loctite 245. Undo the lock screw to adjust the switch unit. Displace the switch unit until the blue tip of the arrow is maximum 1 mm visible at the inlet of the guide of the desired switching contact NC. After adjustment, retighten the lock screw. Grease the radial packing ring as specified in the lubrication schedule. Fit the radial packing ring in the bearing cover. The part number of the bearing cover must face upwards. Drive the radial packing ring evenly into the bearing cover by lightly hammering with a mallet. The fitted radial packing ring must protrude above the surface of the bearing cover by 1.5 to 2 mm. Place the bearing cover with fitted radial packing ring on the spindle with the part number facing downwards. 
Heat the groove ball bearing in oil to 80 degrees centigrade, 176 degrees Fahrenheit, slide it onto the spindle and carefully drive it up to the bearing cover using a suitable pipe. The pipe may only contact the inner ring of the groove ball bearing. Fit the retaining ring and lock the groove ball bearing with the retaining ring. Drive in the dowel pin. The protruding ends must be equal on both sides. Fit the ball bearing protection ring. Heat the groove ball bearing in oil to 80 degrees centigrade, 176 degrees Fahrenheit. Then slide it onto the spindle and carefully drive it up to the ball bearing protection ring using a suitable pipe. The pipe may only contact the inner ring of the groove ball bearing. Fit the mounted spindle carefully into the pivoting bearing and fit in the rubber metal cushion. Remove the grease from the belt surfaces of the flat belt pulley. Carefully place the motor with fitted flat belt pulley on the lower section of the frame. Do not yet let the motor flange lock into the opening in the lower section of the frame. Remove the grease from the flat belt and the belt contact surfaces of the spindle. Place the drive belt on the spindle through the openings in the lower section of the frame and mount the flat belt pulley. Screw the M8 100mm hex head screw with the hexagon nut through the frame bore into the tap hole of the flat belt pulley. Tension the drive belt by turning the hexagon nut clockwise until the motor flange locks into the opening in the lower section of the frame. Fasten the motor with four M10 20mm hex head screws. Unscrew the hex head screw with hexagon nut from the flat belt pulley. Fit the discharge channel into the lower section of the frame and check that the spindle is dead centre. A tolerance of 0.5mm is admissible. If the spindle is inclined towards the motor, stretch the drive belt by pressing it together a number of times, or check the rubber metal cushion for one-sided deformation and replace if necessary. If the spindle slants away from the motor, replace the drive belt. Remove the discharge channel. Fasten the bearing cover with three MA 20mm hex head screws. Check that the spindle can be turned easily. Insert the gasket in the bore. Grease the gasket as specified in the lubrication schedule. Fit the discharge channel in the opening in the lower section of the frame. Insert the discharge connection in the bore. Insert the gasket in the groove of the discharge channel. Fit the spindle cap. Pay attention to correct positioning. Fill the drive chamber with oil, CLP 100, through the charge hole up to the lower edge of the charge hole. The filling amount is approximately 1.3 litres.